Welcome, everyone. My name is Tina Thurston, and I am a proud member of the League of Women Voters, Dakota County. It is my honor to present our moderator, Thana Roth. Thana is a trained moderator, a very active and valuable and longstanding member of our league, currently serving as a co-president. Thank you for moderating the forum. Good evening and welcome to the ISD 191 School Board Candidate Forum hosted by the League of Women Voters, Dakota County. We extend our heartfelt thanks to the candidates for joining us tonight and a special thanks to the City of Burnsville for providing this venue and for Burnsville Community TV for recording and broadcasting this event to residents across the district. We will also share the recording with the school district and on League of Women Voters social media platforms. The League of Women Voters, a nonpartisan organization with a 104 year history, is committed to empowering voters through education, engagement, and civic participation. We do not support or oppose any political candidate or party. League of Women Voters Dakota County aims to deliver unbiased information to Minnesota voters irrespective of their political affiliations. This forum is a public service designed to offer you the chance to hear directly from the candidates about important issues. Please note that the views expressed are those of the candidates and not those of the League. Our sponsorship of this forum does not constitute an endorsement of any candidate. We provide complete, unedited recordings of our forums. Editing is permitted only for official media purposes, and any excerpts or edited clips must not be used for partisan or political purposes. There are four candidates running for three open seats on the ISD 191 school board. Three of the candidates are with us tonight. Anne-Marie Anderson was not able to be here. She submitted an opening statement, which I will read as part of the opening comments. We'll begin with the candidates' open, opening statements, each last two minutes. They will be delivered in alphabetical order. Closing statements will be given in reverse alphabetical order. Questions will be asked in random order, and candidates will have 90 seconds to answer each question. We kindly ask that you adhere to these time limits. Our timekeeper will hold up a yellow sign to indicate you have 15 seconds remaining and a stop sign when it's time to wrap up your response so we can proceed to the next candidate. Many of tonight's questions were submitted via email and reviewed by a league committee for clarity. Additional questions were developed based on community interests. Due to time constraints, we will not be able to address every question that was submitted. Thank you for your participation, and we look forward to an engaging and informative discussion. The forum will conclude in about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Let's begin with opening statements. The order for opening statements will first be Anna Marie Anderson is read by me in her statement, followed by Rachel, then Christopher Peach and Anna Werb. So Anne, Anne Marie's statement. My name is Anne Marie Anderson. My husband Taryn and I have lived in Burnsville for 10 years, having moved here from the East Coast. I have two sons in fourth and third grades at Gideon Pond. I'm on the PTO board at Pond and currently serving my fourth year as a Minnesota Reading Corps tutor through AmeriCorps. I'm running for the school board because I see a need for representation and advocacy that truly reflects the experiences of our students and families. Having firsthand experience in our schools, I understand the challenges and opportunities that our community faces. I believe that those who have navigated the educational system, whether as parents, teachers, or students, bring invaluable insights that can help shape, shape effective policies and initiatives. My background in pastoral counseling has refined my ability to remain an objective listener and thoughtful discerner. I can listen to diverse perspectives, 
participate in constructive dialogue, and make informed decisions that prioritize the best interests of our community as a whole. I have the means, both in terms of time and resources, to dedicate myself to this role and to work collaboratively with other board members, educators, and community stakeholders. My goal is to ensure that every voice is heard and that our schools are places where all students can thrive. All right, next will be Rachel Rickelson. Hi, uh, good evening, and thank you for this opportunity to attend the forum. Uh, I'm Rachel Mickelson, and I am a mom to three children, uh, two of whom recently graduated from Burnsville High School, and uh, the third is a uh, freshman uh, at the high school. So, you know, I've experienced school at each level uh, within the Burnsville district. Uh, I've lived in the district for 22 years myself. Um, and I work as a certified public accountant, uh, which I think could be very helpful for all of those budgetary uh, kinds of issues and subjects uh, that come up within the district. Um, and, you know, why am I running for the school board? Well, um, you know, I've always been interested in government as a way to serve uh, the community. And uh, I think local government is the place to have the most meaningful impact uh, to the community. And for the school board in particular, it's because I believe in this district. I really do. Uh, my kids have had a wonderful experience and I want to make sure uh, that every family can have a similar kind of experience. Uh, and why now? Um, I considered running 13 years ago uh, when there was a special election, uh, but I just didn't have the work-life balance uh, at that time, um, but now I do. So I understand the commitment uh, and the time required uh, for this position. Uh, and finally, kind of to talk about my priorities, uh, I think that, uh, you know, graduation rates, student safety, test scores, student retention are all kind of issues that uh, the district is, is facing. Um, our students need a high school diploma, and, you know, it's their first step to really being future ready. Uh, to graduate, the kids need to come to school. Uh, they need to feel safe. Uh, they need to feel seen and respected by the faculty. Our, our test scores uh, are not necessarily always the best measure, but it's a very visible one. Um, and when we accomplish these last two, we can increase student retention. Thank you. Christopher Peach. Hi, uh, my name is Christopher Peach. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'd like to discuss my involvement in District uh, 191. In 1972, my family moved to Pernsville. Uh, I entered third grade and was taught by Miss Jones. I remember her very clearly, and I remember the principal was Dr. Senny. I enjoyed my time as a crossing guard. I then moved to Nicola Junior High School. Uh, one of my favorite teachers there was Miss Walters for social studies class. Um, she got me involved in a mock trial program, which was very interesting. Moving on up to uh, Burnsville High School, I got involved in the Junior Achievement Program. One of my favorite uh, teachers there was Mr. Rodell. And um, Mr. Mraz, very <clears throat> well known, was my guidance counselor. After graduation, I enrolled at Mankato State University. Some of the qualifications I think I have for this position are, um, I've spent the last 30 years teaching in Asia, both in Japan and China. I've worked for a number of schools in a variety of positions, including teaching special needs, exam preparation, business English, and kids. I also worked as an assistant trainer, trainer, recruiter, director of studies, course developer, marketeer, service manager, and new school designer. The reason for uh, running for school board is I have recently moved back to Burnsville and want to continue to be involved in education and share my passion for education as well. I think I have a lot of passion and talent for the challenges of school board member and contribute in a meaningful way. Some of the priorities that I think this, the district should focus on are special needs education, uh, graduation rates, and student guidance and promotion to pathways for workforce ready, trade ready, and college ready. In a word. 
Good evening, uh, District 191 uh, residents. Um, my name's Anna Werb, and I moved to the district in 2007 when my oldest daughter was in the sixth grade. Um, I currently have two other children enrolled in the district. One is in uh, ninth grade, and one is in um, sixth grade. Um, I became very interested in um, running for the school board back in 2020. Um, I was um, involved in a lot of diversity, equity, and inclusion um, committees at my employer. And I felt very much like um, there was a need to make sure that our students were, you know, being inclusive and our, our district was being inclusive to um, all of the students in our um, in our district, uh, there was a lot of things going on at that time that I had concerns about. Um, so I was encouraged by some other um, civic-minded people that I worked with that it, it was a good idea to run for the school board. Um, I was also heavily involved with the PTO, and um, I was just very um, passionate about the students in our district. Um, ensuring that everyone was getting an equitable, equitable education and everyone was being you know, treated um, equally um, and had access to all the resources and tools they needed to graduate and become successful. Um, so I, I believe that you know, we have very strong tools and resources in our district and I, I think that we need to continue to work to promote those programs that we currently have. Um, I do believe that, you know, there's work that needs to be done to retain our enrollment. Um, we need to understand, um, you know, ways that we can, you know, create um, and attract students to our district and also um, focus on test scores and, um, a, a major problem that we're ha having right now is in school truancy. And I, I believe that we need to really look at that and, and uh, develop ways to address that so um, we can focus on, on, focusing on um, how we can address that and, and create um, support systems for the students. Um, Thank you, candidates. Yeah. Let's now proceed to the questions. The response order for the first question is Christopher, followed by Rachel, and then Anna. The first question, please tell us two or three things that you think this district is doing well. Christopher? Well, uh, the main thing that um, strikes me from discussions with the uh, school board and uh, other, other members uh, of the community is their Pathways program. Um, the Pathways program seems to be a very integrated and very engaging program where it gets different students to focus on their interests and then shows them a pathway how they can use that interest or apply that interest and become workforce ready, trade ready, or college ready. Um, that's the only one that I can think of right now. Rachel? Uh, thank you. Um, first thing uh, that I think the uh, schools are doing very well is really having a variety of options, uh, particularly at the high school level. Um, you know, the Pathways program uh, that Chris mentioned, uh, an opportunity to have an AA degree uh, when you graduate, uh, college in the schools classes, uh, PSEO if you uh, want to be uh, attending something off campus to be able to have uh, flexibility in the kinds of uh, classes that you attend, uh, the virtual academy. Uh, and the fact that uh, the Pathways program is kind of getting pushed down to the elementary and middle schools to help kids kind of be, and, and, and the students to really be ready uh, for that uh, Pathways program once they reach high school, uh, and uh, be able to have options other than just, you know, 
emphasizing everybody's going to go to college and you know well what if that isn't where uh, a student really sees themselves uh, going to say a four-year university uh, I think that our uh, schools really provide options uh, for our students so they really can feel like school is meaningful to them and providing a a, a real education direction for them, something that can be meaningful for them uh, for their future. And uh, so I think those are a couple of the things that the schools are doing very well. Thank you. Anna. Uh, I agree with um, both the other candidates that our Pathways program is um, one of the things we are doing very well um, with um, providing our students with uh, career focuses before they graduate and preparing them for, be, you know, the before they get out into the workforce, uh, they already have that experience um, behind them, as well as uh, the opportunity to have an AAS degree before they graduate high school. Um, we also have put in many interventions within our district to identify when students are struggling so that we can get them going on the right path. Um, those early interventions are what are key to getting students um, back on track if they're failing or if they're, they're struggling in a particular area or subject. Um, I believe we're also doing very well at letting students um, identify with where they are culturally. Um, we have um, many uh, affinity groups that the students can join and just, you know, let their, um, their identity of who they are as a student really shine through um, and let them feel very much like they're um, who they are as a, as a person. They can come to school and feel like um, they, they aren't afraid to be who they are um, at school. Thank you. The response order for the next question is Anna, followed by Chris, and then <laughs> and then Rachel. The second question is, what are a school board member's roles and responsibilities? How does this differ from the roles, responsibilities of the superintendent or administration? Anna. So the school board member's role is to, um, to oversee the, the superintendent um, as well as uh, approve and um, oversee policy and procedures uh, as well as any type of decisions that are needing to be made um, that regards in regards to budgetary items. Um, the, the school board is basically the oversight of the school district. Uh, this is different from the superintendent um, or the administration because um, they don't make those decisions as far as white if a policy needs to be updated or changed, they can bring those things forward. Um, but ultimately, it's the school board that makes those final decisions and um, approves or you know approves or rejects those. Chris, um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on all the uh, roles of the uh, school board members versus the uh, roles of the superintendent. But from what I understand, um, first role is to listen to the stakeholders, uh, whether it be teachers, students, parents, um, teachers, administrators. The next uh, major thing would be to um, make decisions based on discussion, um, and uh, maybe the constraints that, that go along with either finance or any other constraints that might they, that there might be. Um, superintendent is, as far as I know, the, the person who actually interacts with the uh, state legislator or the, the actual schools themselves, the principals. That's what I know about that. And Rachel. 
So uh, the school board members' uh, role and responsibilities, uh, they have several. Uh, first would be uh, to negotiate the contract with the teachers. Uh, and then uh, as part of that, uh, really since they're a good 80% of the budget with personnel uh, and benefits uh, would be the budget and uh, approving uh, and managing the budget uh, for the school district uh, along with setting the policies for the school district. How this differs from the superintendent and administration is the superintendent and the administration actually implements those policies and then actually follows the budget and you know uh, uses the money that, have been that has been allocated uh, through the budget. Uh, the superintendent and the administration, the faculty, handles the day-to-day, -day, whereas the uh, school board kind of handles the uh, broad uh, kind of, again, policies and direction uh, for the district as a whole. So that would be the differences between the two roles. The response order for the next question is Rachel, followed by Anna, followed by Chris. The teacher's contract with Burnsville was settled nearly one school year after the previous contract ended. Do you think it should be a goal of the school board to reach an agreement earlier in the next round of negotiations? If so, what do you believe the school board could do to help make that possible? Rachel? Um, well, you know, definitely I think everyone uh, would want the uh, agreement to come earlier uh, because it just helps to kind of build, build goodwill on either side. Uh, I think if uh, you're able to come together and reach agreement uh, earlier rather than later. Um, and I think it's, it's not um, necessarily an, an easy thing, but uh, I think building trust uh, between the teachers and the teachers union, the faculty administration and, and the school board, uh, being very open uh, and with information, uh, sharing, uh, can really go a long way uh, toward making negotiations su successful when each side really uh, trusts that uh, they're coming to the table uh, in an open um, manner um, and uh, that no side, uh, that neither side is, is really trying to kind of, I guess, pull one over on the other or really, you know, just get away with uh, something and, and take things away uh, is uh, something I think that is very important. Uh, it's not always easy, but again, really building that trust uh, between uh, the two different sides. Thank you. Anna? Um, yes. Um, I think it should always be a goal to, you know, reach an agreement as soon as we can. Um, nobody likes to drag those things out. Um, it's, you know, important for both sides to, to come to the table with an open mind and be willing to listen to what the other, the other party is saying. Um, I believe that um, we, we want to, to give the teachers as much as they want. I mean, there's, no, there's never anyone saying, well, we don't want this for them or we don't want that. Um, it's everything is comes back to it being a budgetary item and we need to make sure it's something that's equitable for everyone involved. Um, and I, I just think, you know, we, we want to consider everyone that's, that's impacted and that's always at the top of our minds. Um, and I, I think having like a, you know, just a guiding principle of, you know, uh, what, what our, our goals are, you know, when we are going into negotiations of, um, you know, just, you know, why we, why we all want to come together to, to make sure um, everyone gets what they want. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I would agree as well. Uh, obviously, we would, I think everybody would benefit from having teachers feel uh, needed, wanted, and valued. Uh, in our interview with the uh, uh, teachers union, one, that was one of the questions that came up was the negotiations and how they felt that they were very contentious. Um, we discussed, um, I would think some of the, 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 the ways to help with this would first be by transparency. 
if there is a problem, which obviously there seem to be, that we are forthright and, and forthcoming to let the, the teachers know that we are working on it and where we were in the process. Um, another thing would be to secure ample funding, whether it be through the state, the federal, or other, other types of uh, revenue, um, whether it be a bond or something of that nature. Um, yeah, try to get it done as fast as possible. I think that's every, in everyone's best interest. Thank you. The response order for the next question is Chris, followed by Rachel, and then Anna. That question is, as a school board member, you would play a crucial role in shaping the educational environment for students. One contentious issue that has recently come up is banning or restricting certain books from a school libraries or curriculum. How do you believe the school board should approach challenges related to the selection of books in schools? Christopher? Um, I was speaking with uh, the representative, uh, the state representative, Kayla Berg, uh, just the other day concerning this topic. Um, and uh, there is a, a law, I think, that they are working on right now that would be a ban against banning books. So in that case, then that issue is, is, is going to be controlled by law. Um, second thing, uh, I, I've talked with other people about that and uh, the neighbors, they, they had mentioned that that's one of their key concerns of, is about book bans and that they, they don't support any book bans. Another thing to consider concerning that is who the audience would be, which libraries they would go to would dictate which books would benefit those students the most. Um, the idea of a ban I don't, I'm not crazy about, but there does need to be some sort of uh, uh, I don't know, some sort of a, a guidance, let's say, for what books go into the school libraries. Rachel? I know that this issue is coming from uh, generally uh, an area of concern um, the parents may have uh, and the uh, public uh, may have concerning um, what is available at the libraries. I think that providing information and being very transparent uh, is important uh, to help the public really understand uh, what is and isn't available at the libraries. Uh, you know, our school libraries you know, have age appropriate books at each level uh, you know, and they are divided by section and so this is something that I, I think is very important that uh, parents really understand about what is uh, available to them, their children and the kinds of choices that they can make. Um, also, I feel very strongly that everyone needs to see themselves represented. And so there will be books available um, that show a variety of different families uh, different uh, main characters uh, that may be in these books. Um, but I think it is you know, very crucial uh, for them to be available, and that doesn't mean that every student checks them out. Uh, so I think that that is something that is very important to really share with the parents and the people who are concerned. Anna? The curriculum that is available in our district is all um, outlined in policy, um, how the curriculum is chosen, the books that are available. Um, if anyone opposes that, um, I invite them to bring that forward. Um, there, there is, you know, direction that you know parents, com the community, everyone can be involved in what our school is using and what's being shown to children. If someone has those concerns, we, it, 
it's part of our policy to take that input from the from the members of the community. Um, that's what it's you know what we we want to hear. So if there are concerns, they should be brought for, forward. It should be a discussion. It should be you know, is it something that's detrimental to our children? Um, you know, if there's a reason we should or should not have something in our library, there needs to be a discussion about it. And, you know, we, we need to see if that's something we need to decide to remove. The response order for the next question is Anna, followed by Chris, and then Rachel. And this question is, what is your experience with complex budgets? And what would be your financial priorities for the district? Anna. Um, so I, I didn't really touch on this previously um, when I made my introduction, but my background is in um, uh, employee benefits and uh, health insurance. So I've dealt with budgets relating to employers and um, how they would like to spend their money um, as it relates to their health insurance. Um, and also as being part of the school board for the past four years, um, I also have the experience of working currently on the school's budget. Uh, I think our financial priorities for the district um, need to be to continue to have a balanced budget. We've worked very hard to, um, to keep ourselves um, uh, ahead of um, not being in the red um, for a number of years now where we were back when we had to close schools and cut funding for programs. Um, I think we need to focus on um, keeping, you know, things in our, the money in our um, fund balance um, because we need to, you know, prioritize the things um, that are going to make our district stronger, uh, like the programming for, um, you know, the things that um, we're going to aid our students in, uh, like raising their test scores. Chris. Um, I don't have uh, much experience with complex budgets, but as far as financial priorities, um, I think there's three that, that stand out to me. First one would be um, uh, recruiting and retaining uh, good teachers, uh, and that does come at a cost. Uh, an environment that is safe, comfortable, and welcoming which will give the greatest opportunity for the students to be successful. And thirdly, lots of programs. Uh, I mentioned the uh, Pathways program before. Um, programs are really helpful and will keep uh, students engaged and hopefully that will lead to a successful completion of their, their, um, their high school, uh, that, that, that they'll continue on through graduation. Rachel? So uh, as far as complex budgets, um, I'm a CPA. Uh, so I uh, have definitely worked on uh, large projects where when I was in public accounting, you definitely have to manage hours and time and, and looking at the budget. Uh, also budgets within my tax department in the uh, corporations that I've been uh, working within. Uh, I also have some background, at least in my education, in governmental accounting. Uh, so I kind of understand uh, how that works uh, on kind of a broad uh, perspective. You know, haven't worked a lot in governmental accounting, but, you know, I remember that class uh, for sure. Um, and as far as the financial priorities, uh, definitely as uh, have been mentioned, you know, sustainability. Uh, you know, we can't be digging into our reserve uh, funds, you know, forever. Uh, and so we really have to be uh, looking for, you know, any kind of uh, waste or improved, you know, supply change. You know, what can we do to do more with less uh, in any kind of uh, possible way? We have to get kind of creative perhaps in what we can do uh, to uh, pinch pennies uh, here and there uh, and again kind of do more with less uh, if at all possible uh, to be able to provide the kinds of programs uh, that really keep our district going and, and can make it a, a destination kind of district. So 
it won't be easy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The response order for the next question is Rachel, followed by Anna, followed by Chris. And that question is, as a school board member, what is your role in supporting a diverse, equitable, and inclusive environment in our public schools? Rachel. Thank you. Um, definitely, I think, as far as a role in, in supporting this, it is uh, continuing to provide the cultural liaisons uh, that the school has uh, to have outreach to the various different communities within our district. We are a very diverse district. Um, and, you know, I'm not adding a lot of diversity to the board. I'm, you know, a cisgender white woman that uses he, she, you know, she, her <laughs> kind of pronouns. Um, but, uh, you know, I listen. I want uh, the community to come into the listening sessions and uh, voice their concerns, their experiences, and uh, help me to understand what everyone else's experiences have been within the district. No one has exactly the same uh, experience. Every family is different. Every student is different. And so I really want to encourage every member uh, of the community to share their experiences and help me learn and understand how I can kind of be an agent to help them better uh, as well as I can as a member with, of, the, of the board. Anna? Um, yeah, as, a, as a board member, I believe to continue to um, follow the district's framework of the, the cultural, culturally proficient school system um, where we, we look at everything through a lens of, of how the environment um, and everything that shapes the students, um, so supports them and their, you know, whatever cultural background they come from. Um, and then as a board, we look through like everything that we do, make sure that um, that is supportive to those, the students in that way. Um, like anything that we, that comes across our desks is, um, we're, we're looking at, at it from that framework to make sure that everything is inclusive to our students. Like if there's a new program, is it going to be limiting to that, stu you know, a, every, is every student going to be able to get the same, um, is it gonna be equitable, equitable for all of our students? Um, just making sure that everything we do as a board, um, we're using that lens. Chris? Um, I'd like to get away from the, the word diverse, equitable, and inclusive and uh, change the word to cultural wellness. Uh, cultural wellness being being aware and accepting of, of differences and similarities in different cultures. Um, that, that's all I have to say about that. The response order for the next question is Chris followed by Rachel and then Anna. And that question is, if you're elected, what would you hope would be key accomplishments of the board during your years of service? Chris? Um, first and foremost is the, um, the graduation rate. Um, reading online that it was 75% seems to me is, is, is quite poor. Uh, when we live in such a world of abundance that um, it, it, we have so much support to give and so much to offer that if I could raise the, the, the or if the rate could be improved to, let's say, 90%, I would say that would be <clears throat> quite an accomplishment. Rachel? Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, you know, putting my CPA hat on again, a balanced budget uh, would definitely, I think, uh, be uh, a key accomplishment that uh, I would hope for. Uh, as uh, Chris mentioned, uh, increased graduation rates, um, you know, going from, you know, maybe a quarter of our students roughly uh, not graduating to, you know, when that includes the alternative high school uh, to increasing those rates. Um, would definitely be uh, an accomplishment. Uh, also increasing uh, overall enrollment, making this a district of choice 
um, would definitely be uh, a key accomplishment and a goal uh, that I would love to have in the next uh, four years. Uh, and just for every student to really have a positive experience that, you know, if I talk to a student in any kind of uh, situation and ask them, what's been good about your day? have every student be able to tell me that they have had a positive experience that day. That would be uh, my final key accomplishment that I would love to have. Anna. Um, so I would say there's several. Um, for sure, um, seeing test scores back up to where they were pre-pandemic, um, and that does tie into graduation rates. So I would definitely like to see our graduation rates increase. Um, as far as the enrollment, I, I, I know I'm trying to be somewhat optimistic. I would say at least not lose enrollment. If we were even to remain flat, I would be happy with that. Um, and then um, the expansion of the pathways into, we've, we've just begun to ex extend pathways into elementary, but I would love if we could really get parents in with kids in those grade levels talking about pathways in elementary. I, everyone's always talking about pathways in the high school. I'd like to hear them start talking about pathways in the elementary school. The response order for the next question is Anna, followed by Chris, and then Rachel. That question is, would you consider holding a forum with high school students to allow them to express their concerns and questions to the school board surrounding their educational preparedness in a rapidly changing world? Anna? Yes, I absolutely would invite the, the students to, um, to hold a, a forum. I, I so love hearing from our students. Um, I've volunteered and, and just gone into the school. I mean, I've had numerous um, experiences where I've interacted with our students, um, just visiting the schools um, and just getting to see firsthand um, and engaging with our students, I think is, is very important. Um, and hearing from them uh, what, you know, what, um, they might give to us that we could give back to them. Just, you know, what we could maybe glean from that, I think would be very valuable. Chris? Uh, absolutely. Um, they are one of the, the key stakeholders in, in, in the school districts, so their voice should be heard loud and clear. Um, and I would imagine that they're going to uh, offer lots of solutions to some of the problems that they might be facing. Um, <clears throat> I had one more point and I, I don't recall it, no. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. I think there's gonna be a lot of uh, solutions um, presented and because they are a key stakeholder, I absolutely like to hear their voice. Rachel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, obviously, absolutely. Uh, I think students will, uh, as uh, you know, has been mentioned, you know, the, the students I think could really surprise us with the uh, insights that they'll have and the solutions that they'll be able to uh, put forth uh, to what they're seeing in the schools. Um, and you know, I think students really need to know that they can make a difference. And uh, so I think that not only having the forum would be important, but it's then also after the forum, communicating with the students what has come out of their discussions and their suggestions. Uh, how has it made a difference in what's happening in the school so that they can actually see that they can make a difference and that it isn't just kind of wasted time, it's that follow-up after the forum that is also critical. Uh, so the students really feel like they've been heard and that we're engaged in, in taking them seriously in, in what they have told us. Thank you. The response order for the next question is Rachel, followed by Anna, and then Chris. That question is, as a school board member, how would you respond to concerns of parents about what is being taught in the classroom? Rachel. Well, you know, first, I would definitely want to thank 
uh, the parent for, uh, you know, voicing a, a concern. Uh, and But I would uh, need to make it very clear uh, that the school board does not uh, direct what is happening in an individual classroom. Uh, that, you know, I am not the agent of change uh, for what might be their concern. Uh, so, so I would need to direct them uh, to their principal, uh, to the superintendent, as uh, the people who can actually uh, kind of bring about some of that change or has that immediate impact uh, to their concern. Uh, but I would definitely, and I would, you know, kind of, you know, give the principal <laughs> and superintendent a heads up that, hey, there's this concern. A parent may be approaching you uh, with this concern. Um, you know, but I would definitely want the parent to feel uh, heard and uh, also just, you know, again, thanking them for uh, voicing whatever kind of concern they have so that they will feel comfortable uh, going to uh, the appropriate person uh, that can really address that concern. Anna? Um, well, this will depend on how the parent contacted myself or um, if, if it came through an email um, to members of the school board, um, we would direct that, that uh, parent back to their principal um, and we would copy the superintendent and other board members. Um, if it was somebody, if, it, if a parent just approached me, um, I, would, I would direct them back to the, the principal. Um, um, as Rachel stated, we, we do not, that's, that's not the level the school board, um, you know, addresses. We, we are higher level than that. Um, that, that needs to start with the, the principal of the school um, to address what's going on in the classroom. Um, yeah. Chris? Uh, I would first invite these uh, parents to the, the board meetings themselves. Um, I would like to um, give, give their concerns uh, a lot of consideration. I'd like to study the issues. Um, uh, I'd be open to communicate both questions and answers and, and then discuss too perhaps that they, they may be uh, state law or mandates that, that might be guiding those decisions. The response order for our final question is Chris, followed by Rachel, and then Anna. And our final question is, how has your participation in community activities, such as with Burnsville Schools, and your professional experience prepared you to serve as a school board member? Christopher? Um, well, I haven't been in the community, uh, just, just came back recently. I've been gone for quite a long time. Uh, I don't have anything for that answer. Rachel? So uh, my uh, participation uh, with the schools directly has mainly been, you know, as a parent and uh, being uh, attending uh, my children's activities, uh, you know, family fun days and things when they were in elementary school. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for a number of years, uh, work-life balance was not a thing uh, that I had. <laughs> and uh, so I was not able to be as involved in things like PTO as I would have liked. Um, and so, you know, again, that's where I, I feel that school board is, is a great way uh, for me to really get involved uh, with schools now that I do have uh, the ability and the time um, at my disposal. Uh, my professional experience, you know, working in tax, tax, believe it or not, with uh, the law uh, is a bit of gray areas. They're complex issues. They require research. Uh, you don't always know the answer. And you need to uh, research. You need to ask questions. Uh, you need to get clarification. You need to talk with other people. And I think that these kind, this kind of analytical uh, experience and uh, open-mindedness and willingness to go and ask questions and be able to say, I don't know. 
uh, is something that I can really use on the school board to be able to get input from a, a variety of sources to be able to make the best kind of decision. And that is something that I've had to do uh, in my career. Thank you. Anna? Uh, yes, so um, as I'd stated previously, I was on the, the PTO um, when my, my children were at William Byrne Elementary. Um, I was also um, part of the diversity, equity, and inclusion um, committees at a prior employer, um, as well as um, you know, involved in various activities with my children, with sports. Um, <clears throat> um, and then as far as my professional experience, I, I do have um, background in employee benefits and health insurance, and I worked specifically with public sector um, school district plans. Uh, so I have the background as far as like what, you know, and that aspect relating to um, how I can correlate it to how to retain and design employee benefit packages to attract employee, employees to the district as well as as it, as it relates to a budgetary item because employee benefits is one of the largest budget items that our district spends money on. Um, so having oversight over that one particular item um, is highly desirable. And that brings us to closing statements. Candidates will have two minutes. Closing statements will be in reverse alphabetical order beginning with Anna Werb, followed by Christopher Peach, and then Rachel Mickelson. Christopher, I'm sorry, Anna. Uh, yeah, I just, for my closing statements, I would just like to say as a current board member and a current um, parent of district, of, st of students in the district, I'm very passionate about our district. Um, I love our district. I, I, you know, would never have. I, w I would not have wanted my kids to go anywhere else. I believe we have a stellar um, education program in our district. I would. I would appreciate your vote for me as I would continue to do the work I've been doing on our board to make sure and ensure all of our students have the programming and the tools and resources they need to become the best student, be the best students and um, further their, um, their path to whatever that may lead them after they graduate. My focus is on, um, re, you know, um, increasing test scores, um, increasing graduation rates, um, retaining students um, and I think we really need to focus on in-school truancy. We need to identify the reasons um, why that has grown to such um, exorbitant levels since the pandemic. Um, that can be a key to why we have lower test scores. Um, and I, I really think that we need to focus on these issues. And uh, just I would like to continue to make our district the best that it can be. Thank you. Christopher? Uh, I'd like to share my gratitude. Um, so thank you very much for having me here today to talk about uh, topics that I feel very passionate about. Um, I'd like to re, uh, restate my qualifications. Uh, I have an extensive involvement in many aspects of the education business from all over the world. Uh, I have firsthand experience in, with the district being a student from third grade through graduation and then on to uh, State University. Uh, I think I'm sensible, principal, creative, and have strong communication skills. Um, restate the, my priorities. Uh, the graduation rates need to increase. Um, special needs education, I think, is, is a priority. And uh, finally, student guidance and promotion to pathways for workforce ready, trade ready, and college ready. And finally, call to action. Don't forget to vote. Rachel? 
Uh, first, I want to thank the League of Women Voters uh, for organizing and hosting uh, this forum. Uh, to everyone who submitted questions, uh, thank you. Uh, and also to everyone who's taken the time to watch this in whatever uh, place you have. Uh, being an informed voter is very important, and I hope that we've provided you with helpful information to help you to make your decision uh, here tonight. You know, I really believe in District 191. I, I live on the edge of the district. Uh, the closest elementary school to my house, uh, two blocks away, was actually in a different district. But I did not do open enrollment into another district. I wanted my children to stay in Burnsville. Uh, and I definitely value the you know, work that teachers do, the diversity in the district, the experiences that my children uh, have been able to have within the district. And that's why I'm running for school board, is to be able to give back uh, to this district that's really given a lot uh, to my family. Um, you know, there's no easy answers uh, to the largest issues that are facing the district. Um, you know, whether it be retention, testing, graduation rates, I mean, th there's just no easy answers, but that's what makes the board a rewarding experience. That means, you know, participating in any way uh, within the district a rewarding experience. And if it was easy, everyone would do it. <laughs> and, you know, I really look forward to the challenge uh, of the next four years being part of that board uh, and working on those issues if I'm elected. Thank you very much. And that concludes our candidate forum. On behalf of the League of Women Voters, Dakota County, we extend our sincere gratitude to everyone who participated in tonight's forum. A special thank you goes to our candidates for their commitment to the democratic process and their willingness to serve our community. The League of Women Voters is dedicated to researching issues crucial to our members and the well-being of our communities. If you're interested in learning more about our work and discovering how you can make a difference, please visit lwvdakotacounty.org. For additional information about voting and candidates, please check out mnvotes.org and vote411.org. Thank you again for tuning in, and don't forget to vote by 8 p.m. on November 5th.